1861, the Rodman Cannon. This Rodman Cannon was originally cast in 1861 as a smooth bore columbiade at the West Point Foundry in New York State. It was invented by a young artillery officer named Thomas Jackson Rodman. It was originally designed to serve as part of a short battery at Fort McHenry in Baltimore, Maryland, until 1885 when it was returned to WPF and sleeved with a rifle barrel insert. Due to its extremely advanced design, it was used for testing and development of the future cannons in 1898. It was dedicated to be obsolete or declared to be obsolete and retired by the U.S. Army. In 1906, members of the Huff Post of the Great Army of the Republic, GAR, installed this cannon here in Soldier's Circle of the Greendale Cemetery as a tribute to their fallen comrades. At that point, citizens and school children of Lawrenceburg raised over $660 to bring the cannon from Fort McHenry that amounted to 660 would translate to almost 18,000 in today's market and was a huge sum of money in 1906. On Veterans Day 2011, this Robin Cannon was restored and rededicated to all the veterans who, who's alive, who lie buried in the sacred ground beneath it. The entire project was conceived and paid for by the citizens of Dearborn County and members of the David McAllister Post 239 of the American Legion, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. That's a cool history about this cannon. Very cool history here in a cemetery. Yeah. Erected May 30th, 1906. 19, oh, yeah, it's 1906. That's what's that on her? A lot of veterans buried here in previous wars, civil, all the way up to probably recent. Let's continue down this way. Eternal Flame. This is dedicated to the internal memory of those veterans who served. guns are cool. Yep. Done with the veteran section. We're going to hit that section A. We'll start there. A couple cool monuments in section A. We're going to take a picture of Talk about it a little bit. Alright, let's get started on section A. We are like a circle all the way around. Look at this monument. Says Miller. It's really bright out here today. Uh, this is in a circle too. I guess the older cemeteries didn't do what we do today. That's the monument. The cemeteries must have went in a semi all the way around in a circle. Here's section B we're in. Uh, we're standing right in the middle. 360 view, I guess. That big monument. Alright. Uh, before we go to section C, I'd like to take a look at this. It's a uh, internment for ashes. I don't know what section it's at. I don't know if it has its own section or it's part of another section. But it's right in, right in between section A and B and C. Right in the middle of it.
right here we are section C kind of look around uh, look at that monument Dickinson Gibson, Ty C. W. Gibson. Oh, more, oh, older tombstones. Hmm. Oh, unique looking. A little bit thicker than the usual ones we see. Born in 1751. This one was Kentucky was a territory at the time. 1773. About 200 years before I was born. Oh, this is the Greendale Cemetery Perpetual Care Memorial. It says, show me the manner in which a nation or community cares for its dead and I will measure with mathematical exactness the tender mercy of its people. Their respect for laws of the land and their loyalty to high ideals. We're in section L. Look around a little bit. Little angel sitting on a bench. Oh, look at this. Family of Robert H. Nance. That's an option, I don't know. Yeah, they're not very, very deep. Or that's just the top of it. Alright, welcome to section CS. It's a little strip all the way down here. There's some older tombstones here. Right in the sun. Row three. Section D, right under a tree, best place to be. Oh, look at this. Cross of Jesus right in the middle of it. Reverend J. Sonderman. Oh, that's a reverend. 1875 to 1917. All right. All right, we're in Section E now. More cool monuments. Oh, look at this plot. Joseph F. Ziegler, 1936. Got some more graves in the ground. Maybe they're, yeah, they're uh, tombstones embedded in the ground. 
Aldana Victor, 1888 to 1887. Oh, they're infants. Well, she's, it was an infant. This is a small toddler. Sad. Here are Anna and Victor. I guess their parents. Both died. Same year. She passed away. Or he passed away in January 1925. She passed away May 1st, 1925. Oh, not too far apart from each other. Alright, we are in section F. Another circle like. Graves. That big section was hardly anything else. Where I'm marking. Where I'm marking. That's the Hayes family plot here. That's a cool looking one. Look at it. It's weathered down too. So it's been here a while. Nolan. It's a book form. Huh? You got mother, father. Is that an Aoki? And what is this? I can't hardly read it. Welcome to Section G. That's a big monument. It says Cook on it. Wow. Huge family plot. Real big family plot. I think it takes up half the section. A lot of reeves. 1950, really, if you think about it, it's not that far off. I mean, yeah. Last century, but still. A lot of monuments out here. There was section P uh, CS over there. Uh, Alright, here's section H. You notice the pattern, it's like circles pretty much. Most of them. Other than CS. Most of them are all circles. Yes. Or you want to be more technical, a spear. More graze. <laughs> Edna Catherine, 1949. All right, welcome to section I. And yeah, look at this big monument. Daniel, now that's a monument. I've ever seen one. I'll make you stand out. Yeah. Alright, welcome to Section J. Let's head over here. There's a lot of trees in this cemetery. Fargo makes a different cemetery. All these trees make it more appealing to remember your loved ones. I know that's coming in. I think it's a family plot. Or probably just a bunch of them gathered together. And there goes a squirrel right at the tree. Right here is a fallen branch across the tombstones. Okay. Alright, welcome to Section K and the wind's starting to pick up. A few tombstones, old ones, mostly in the ground. Section Q is not very big, but it does have a unique tombstone. 
HAA a hag I guess that is a real interesting tombstone yeah if you watch traveling old man you know I like the bridges when I go hiking All right, all right, this is the PS section. Let's skip around a little bit. Pretty long, I'm gonna go all the way. I'm guessing it stretches both sides of the road. All right, here's the end section. Graves are U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Thomas D. Denning, born 1947, he passed away in 1967. He's U.S. Marine Corps Third Division, Third Third Raider Battalion, killed in action in Vietnam. Travel a long way down there and he traveled a long way back. Now he's home. Welcome home. Alright, we're about to enter section in. There's something over there. The mark of this channel is to tombstones like this. Unusual. That one says Taylor on it. They're all Taylor. Well that's those three Taylor, that's box. That is a neat looking tombstone, both of them. Look at that. Oh. Hey, somebody my name, Troy E. Vaughn. World War II vet. Born 1923, passed away 1997. I was in the military myself at that point. Out in California, there's another one. Jack C. Crow Grove. Corporal U.S. Army, Korea, 1930-1992, another vet. Oh, here's another one, John Lee Swell Jr., PSC U.S. Army, World War II, 1992, passed away now, he was born 1927. All right. Oh, look at this one, JoJo. I like the dogs and Wolverine. Seems like years that you've been away, but it's only been months and a couple of days. It's weird not seeing your face around, but we feel you among us shining down. We'll carry you in our hearts throughout the years, though it may bring pain and lots of tears. I went to the visitation and the funeral. On seeing you there, I wouldn't believe it was true. We all just stared with tears in our eyes. It was all just too much. A total surprise and I'm saying this now and two ends were one it's true when they say the good die young oh was he Jason Michael Hall 1997 born 1981 what was young what was that 15 16 years old section O look at this Trisha Donna Sue Rogers rock gravestone. Yeah, I think that's kind of neat. I like some of these tombstones where they got a gravestone and you just put plaque on it. I mean, I don't know. It makes you think, right? PFC Army passed away 2006. And there's another one, Charles Simmons, Corporal U.S. Army, 1997. And look at this. I came over here. I saw this tombstone. When I was driving around. Gotta look at it. Look how big it is. Look at that. It says Hill. Lauren Elizabeth Hill. Wait a minute. I think that's the girl that had brain cancer, right? And she passed that she played her last she played her last game. Yeah, it is her. Oh my god. Lauren was our hometown girl who was known for her smile. 
selflessness, grace, and strength. Nearly overnight, she inspired a nation and was known around the world for her determination and courage to chase her dream of playing college basketball while fighting a rare terminal pediatric brain tumor called diffuse etrusnic pontin galoma. Or galoma. She became a voice for children fighting cancer and an advocate in the desperate drive for research, funding, better treatments, and ultimately a cure. People loved and admired Lauren for all her she stood for in her six short months as the international voice for the home run cure. She helped raise $1.4 million for brain cancer research before earning her angel wings herself. Among Lauren's gifts to the world were reminders of simple truths. Never give up chasing your dreams. Always live in the moment. Laughter makes everything better. Be true to yourself. Fight for what you believe in. And those you love, leave nothing unsaid. Trust in God's plan that each of us have been placed on earth for a greater purpose than ourselves. Forever 22 strong and deeply missed. Ah, man. I remember reading about her and looking on the news how she had brain cancer and she's buried here in Glendale. Wow. You never know, right? I like that tombstone. I like the angel with holding Hill 22. I tell you. Cemeteries hold a lot of things. I mean, I've read about her on the news. I didn't know she was buried here. I mean, I just came here because I saw how, how nice it looked. And I wanted to do a video on it found her tombstone here. I think that's a beautiful tombstone. Karen and John. Mary Jo's still around, but that's a cool looking tombstone. I like that Celtic cross. Blocks. Look at that. Bricks laid out over a tomb, a grave. That, that is nice. I mean, you, you gotta admit, that is nice. Harold and Caroline. Well, Harold's not. He's still here, but his wife's buried here. That's cool looking. All right, this is the last section of the cemetery. It doesn't have a section name, but I'm going to call it the original section of the cemetery. But this is the oldest section. Tell, look at all, all these tombstones, man. This is the reason why I do this channel. These were the original people that came here and settled in this region. Who knows, some of them probably fought in the American Revolution. I mean, yeah, we saw old ones on the other side, but man, these I think these are older. Well, is that 1846? Not too much older. Uh, about this one. Age five, 51? Don't know. Yeah, 51 years. Passed away 1842, 1850. They probably were born around the turn of century, late part of the century. All right. Sacred in the memory of Elizabeth, consort, consort of Samuel Craft, who departed this life the 20th of February 1845, aged 39 years, nine months, and eight days. Remember me as you pass by as you are now so once was I as I can now so you must be prepare for death and follow me Mary Dunn now I know these these are unusual tombstones Yeah, this is missing that, I'm guessing. All right, thank you for joining me on this cemetery tour here at Greendale, Indiana. The Lord, one, I was surprised. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, think, I didn't know she was here, but we do know. And uh, yeah, from me, everybody here in Green, Glendale Cemetery, rest in peace. I'll see you on the next video. Take care of yourselves and remember your loved ones.